Federal Reserve System is a strange creature. It's easier to say what it is not than what it is. Uh, most people think it's a government agency. It is not. Uh, those who have studied it say, well, wait a minute, this is a private banking corporation. You almost get half credit for that, but it's not really a private corporation either. It's a hybrid. And to make it more complicated, we can say it is a cartel. This is the amazing thing. The Federal Reserve System is a banking cartel. Uh, it's no different than a banana cartel or an oil cartel or the sugar cartel. It just happens to be a banking cartel. It's a group of very large and powerful private banking interests who have gotten together in a cartel arrangement and they brought the federal government into it as a partner in order to use the force of law to enforce the, the cartel agreement. You see, with most cartels, uh, if a member of the cartel wants to break out or violate the agreement, if they fixed prices, for example, and one of the members of the cartel wants to raise the prices contrary to the agreement, there's no way for them to, to discipline the member of the cartel and force him to stick with the agreement. But if you bring the government into the arrangement and convert the agreement into law, now all members are required by law to keep the agreement or they go to jail. So this is why cartels always throughout history have always tried to form a partnership with the government, whatever government is in the locale where they operate. And so we come to the amazing conclusion that the Federal Reserve System is basically a cartel, a banking cartel, that has gone into partnership with the federal government of the United States so that the federal laws can be used to enforce the cartel agreement. Now that's a real shock. It was to me because, you know, when I started in this mm, process of research, I thought, like most people, that the Federal Reserve was an agency of the government and that it was formed to protect the people, to protect you and to protect me and to stabilize the economy and to uh, make sure that we didn't have much inflation or in unemployment or all these bad things. And you know, when the chairman of the Federal Reserve comes before Congress or before the television cameras and he's asked to explain why they raised the interest rates this month or why they lowered them or whatever they did, the chairman always says, well, we did it for you folks. We did it in order to cool down the economy or to stimulate the economy or to, to create more jobs or whatever. It's always expressed in terms of, we did it for you folks. It wouldn't go too well if they said, well, we really did it because it helped the banks. Uh, people would say, what? What did he say? You know, But you can imagine uh, the head of the banana cartel saying, well, why did you raise the price of bananas this month? Well, we did it for you folks to, to make sure that um, uh, that there would be enough stimulus in the economy that we would always have bananas, you see. Anyway, back to the question. What is the Federal Reserve System? It is a cartel, and it's a hybrid organization. There are very few like it in existence. It seems to have some of the characteristics of a government agency because the government is involved, and it seems to have some characteristics of a private corporation because it's actually owned by private banks. But it's neither of the two. It's a hybrid. And when it comes to ownership, for example, the member banks actually own the Federal Reserve System. But those certificates of ownership do not carry the usual prerogatives of ownership. For example, the banks can't sell the shares. If you can't sell something, you don't really own it. And they can't even vote for their board of directors, you see. So what's this ownership business? It's merely a, a kind of a a facade. It's, it's a name. It's a word they give to it. Well, it's owned by the banks, but in reality, it is really a hybrid. It's a cartel that operates under the protection of the federal government, and the government has given it a monopoly, a virtual monopoly, to create the nation's money supply. Now, I have no doubt that the members of the Federal Reserve System, the, the banking cartel, want to see the economy as as uh, strong as possible. They don't want to kill the goose that laid the golden egg. But you can be sure that when there is a conflict between the, uh, uh, the advantage of the cartel or the purposes of the nation at large, there has to be no choice. They always go for the purpose of the, of the cartel because that is who they are. That is who employs them. That's where their money comes from. That's the reason for being. 
Now, the purpose of the Federal Reserve System really is to protect the large member banks from competition and to preserve their profit margins. And as we've seen in late, uh, when some of the banks get into trouble, the purpose of the Federal Reserve System comes to the fore, which is to pass on the losses of the banks to the taxpayers. They do this uh, through Congress, generally. Remember, Congress is a partner with the Federal Reserve System. And they go to Congress and they say, well, the banks are in trouble. Now, we don't want the banks to fold because that would be bad for the economy, right? That would be bad for you folks. And so, since it's for you folks that we're doing this, the congressmen kick in the extra money to bail out the banks, to guarantee the loans, to guarantee the interest payments from the countries that are going bankrupt and can't make their interest payments to the bank and so forth, whether it's Mexico or China or Russia or some country in Africa or Asia. They cannot pay. They cannot pay. So they come to Congress. Congress says, we'll pay for them. And it seems like it's a humanitarian thing when in reality all they're doing is transferring tax dollars from you and from me to these countries so they can continue to make interest payments to the banks so the banks don't um, have to write off these loans as bad loans. So that's another purpose of the Federal Reserve System is to pass off the losses of, of the cartel members to the taxpayers. Most people don't realize that, but when you see how it has operated over the years, it's very clear. The purpose of the Federal Reserve System is to promote the best interests of the banking members of the cartel. So what we have here is a banking cartel which has gone into partnership with the federal government and they've used this cozy relationship so that the government has given the banks the power to create the nation's money supply. The banks now, these private banks, have the monopoly over the nation's money supply. And that's not too shabby a deal. When I first became interested in the topic of the Federal Reserve System, I was aware that the Fed was formed not in Washington, D.C., not in the halls of Congress or some meeting room, but it was formed on a private island off the coast of Georgia called Jekyll Island. That's the reason I called my book The Creature from Jekyll Island, because here it was a strange thing that something as important as the Federal Reserve System was created on a private island off the coast of Georgia. That aroused my curiosity. I didn't think too much about it until I got into the details of the history. And what I found was absolutely amazing. First of all, this island in those days was privately owned. It was a resort island. It was a club. They called the Jekyll Island Club. And its members were a relatively small group of billionaires from New York. People like J.P. Morgan and William Rockefeller and their business associates and their families. And they went there during the cold winter months because uh, they wanted to get, get away from the, the ice and snow from New York. And so Jekyll Island in those days was a private uh, resort and they had a beautiful clubhouse there. In fact, it's still standing for anybody who wants to go there and visit it. The island has been preserved in many of these cottages which they called them in those days, which were the summer resort uh, homes of the very wealthy, are still there and you can visit them and it's quite an example of the elegance and opulence of the turn of the century. But the key feature is the clubhouse. And the clubhouse is where this meeting took place. 